Hey folks, welcome back to our Dice Tower Preview. I'm Mark, and today we're taking a look at Mosaic. Mosaic is brought to you by Forbidden Games. It's for one to six players, ages 12 and up, and games range anywhere from 60 to 120 minutes. In Mosaic, you guide an ancient civilization from its founding. Your decisions will determine whether it will thrive and be remembered as the greatest civilization in history or falter and be lost to the sands of time forever. Which leader will guide you? Which technologies and advantages will your civilization research? Where will you found your starting city? Will you focus on expansion or productivity? Will your people be great builders or great thinkers? Will you build soaring wonders or trade networks? Will you found new cities and towns or recruit powerful armies to create an empire? Will your people praise you during a golden age or curse you for your oppressive taxes? Each decision that you make is another shining stone in your civilization's unique mosaic. So let's take a look at this world of mosaic. So each player has their own board to track their civilization. You have population, trade goods, tax and tariff production, food, idea and stone production. Each player also receives a leader and will draft five starting technologies, all of which will dictate your starting resources. You will be tracking all this on your player board with miniatures. You also have miniatures for your various types of buildings and cities, as well as your military might. The main board is divided into regions that you hope to control for maximum points. The different areas of the board receive trade goods and treasure tokens. As you build, you will gain these resources. Around the edge of the board, you will see the various card types. These decks are tax and tariff, technology, population, and build. There are also wonders that you will hopefully be building during the course of the game. Expensive, but well worth it. All of the various resources, food, stone, coins, and ideas you will see as prototypes, but still may change, so keep a close eye on the campaign. So in this game, there are key technologies and projects that give your civilization unique abilities, as well as symbols that represent one of the nine components of civilization. We have science, economy, food production, population and health, building, culture, government, military and empire, and urbanization. Acquiring these components is important in creating the unique mosaic of your civilization. They're used as prerequisites for many new technologies, as well as for scoring. Also, by pursuing specialization in one or more civilization components, you may be able to claim a golden age of that type, giving you more victory points as you race to achieve the ultimate civilization. So this may seem like a huge civilization building game, and well, it is, but it's also very easy to jump into. Gameplay is very straightforward. On your turn, you will perform one of seven main actions. You only get to do one of these on your turn, which makes gameplay move pretty quickly. So tech is key in this game. Let's learn a new technology. You select a card from the technology offering, paying five idea resources, and if there are any icons on the top right of the card, then you must already have those prerequisites in your current tech offerings for the card to be active. If not, then you can still purchase the card, but activate it at a later time once you meet the requirements. And then follow the instructions on the card. These cards do many things, but the icons at the bottom add to your technology engine. Or you might choose to be the founder of a new city or town or build a project. You will select a card from the build offer and pay the cost in stone, ideas, and or population. Building and projects have different costs, but towns are free. Once you build, you place your matching token or miniature on the board. Where you build is up to you, but it is dictated by the type. A port city must be built on a port. And then gather your resources from the spot you built on and what the card calls for. You must also add money to the tax and tariff area. Or choose to construct a wonder. Select one of the available wonder tiles and pay stone and food. Very expensive, but it will add to your VP and influence of the area. You also have the option of recruiting or moving military units. You'll pay money and add military units or move those that you already have in play, positioning yourself to have even more influence over a region. You can increase your civilization population with a card from the population growth offering and pay the required food. You can produce key currencies used to purchase everything in the game. 
Again, you can only do one of these things on your turn. You can produce food, stone, or ideas. You can do this by adding your population to the production bonus of that currency type. Or you can choose to generate some coin, levy tariffs, or tax your people to raise that money, which is the universal currency of the realm. You will select a card from the trade tax offering, but beware that can cause unrest in your civilization. So those are the main basics of all the different actions you can perform on your turn. But as the game goes on and your civilization grows, empire scoring cards are eventually revealed from the four decks. Each time an empire scoring card is revealed, your civilization will score for each region that you dominate with your cities and military units. After the third empire scoring card is revealed, there is one final turn and the game ends. You will then score for your cities, your towns, your wonders, projects, and golden ages. And for all of your cards that score for your unique civilization components and technology. So whoever scores the most victory points will be the civilization that has stood the test of time. All right, folks, just a reminder once again, this has been a Dice Tower Paid Preview, and everything you've seen here has been in prototype form, so keep a close eye on the campaign for any changes that still may occur. Now, with that said, I really like the fact that this is a Civ game that is super accessible, really easy to jump into, and it plays fairly quickly, actually, as you build up your civilization. Now, what I really liked about the game in general was the engine building with the different technologies as you build them up and position yourself for scoring more victory points at the end of the game. But there's lots of interesting aspects and lots of interesting choices to be made in this game. But folks, if this looks like something that would be of interest to you, I'm sure they'd appreciate your support. So I think that's it for me, and until next time, we'll see you at the table.